stately plump Buck Mulligan came from the stairhead, bearing a bowl of lather on which a mirror and a razor lay crossed. The yellow dressing gown, ungirdled, was sustained gently behind him by the mild morning air. He held the bowl aloft and intoned, Intrawebo ad altari dei. Solemnly, he came forward and mounted the round gun rest. He faced about and blessed gravely thrice the tower, the surrounding country, and the awaking mountains. Slow music, please. Shut your eyes, gents. One moment, a little trouble about those white corpuscles. Silence all. I've never read James Joyce, the 20th century Irish novelist who spent most of his life in Europe, but whose works pulled mostly from his childhood and college days in Dublin. With a view of the sea breaking against the rocks, the tower on Sandy Cove, where Joyce once crashed with a friend, is as good a place to start as any. As a guest of his friend Gogarty, Joyce shared this room and its bare necessities, until he, not exactly the easiest guest, was given a strong hint. He had to leave. Another life experience becomes grist for the mill. One thing you're definitely going to want to do when you come to Dublin is to visit the tower at Sandy Cove. Whether you've read all of James Joyce's work or are a complete beginner to his world, you can come here and see the room in which he actually lived with two of his friends. These were the things that they used and was based on his days here that he was actually inspired to write Ulysses. In the gloomy domed living room of the tower, Buck Mulligan's gowned form moved briskly about the hearth to and fro, hiding and revealing its yellow glow. Two shafts of soft daylight fell across the flagged floor from the high barbicans.